Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Genetic Genius Podcast. On this week's episode, Kai and Dell of Our Daily Magic discuss soul healing and how to truly develop your own inner magic through growth, loving your inner child, truth, cultivating relationships, and much more. Kai creates magic. She's a celebrity wealth and wellness soul coach and quantum doctor in training, helping spiritual entrepreneurs and evolved executives who are struggling physically, mentally, and emotionally to discover a sustainable way to be the best shape of their life and maintain it while staying deeply connected to their true body, business, and soul. Dell is known as a true essence connector in which he helps individuals get into a deep, loving connection with their unique divine essence and integrate that expression into their daily lives. Together, they explore your soul's deepest and truest intentions for your life. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Genetic Genius Podcast. I am so excited today for my guests, Kai and Del from Our Daily Magic to be with us. Welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Yay. Awesome. So today we're going to be talking about soul healing and how to truly develop your own magic, which is, I'm really excited to talk about, but before we dive deep down the magical hole, (laughs) so to speak, I'd love for you both to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about what you do, what your purpose, your passion, your place on the planet is. So our listeners can get to know you a little bit better. Absolutely. You first. Ladies first. (laughs) <laughs> sure. My name is Kai and I am a celebrity public speaker. I'm a published deck creator and also I am a PhD student in natural medicine. Awesome. Love it. <laughs> and I'm Dell and I am the true essence connector. And what I like to do is just have powerful transformative conversations with people who are ready to end the war within with themselves and to integrate peace within that can get brought without. And besides that, I am the husband, this lovely guest right here to the side of me and also known as a curious cat. (laughs) (laughs) And we're both the co-creators of Our Daily Magic, which is a podcast (laughs) and also an amazing uh, coaching and lifestyle brand. Awesome. And how long have you both been doing this particular work together? That's a great question. <laughs> Last time I answered that question, I got it wrong. <laughs> you corrected me. What was your last one? You said like four years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we 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 started, I would say we started at four years, but then it didn't really catch momentum for until two years ago. So we started at a time before we were still in our own healing process. It wasn't really working at that time. We did some more healing, some more integration. And from the past two years or so, we've been consistent with the podcast and it's been expanding, not even just with the podcast, but like, like how you mentioned, some soul coaching and that type of stuff. I would say four, but then it really started turning to two years. <laughs> two plus four. <laughs> or four minus two that's great and it does take time to develop a practice as i know but my own practice yeah it takes time it's just not we i practice patience all the time when i'm developing new things as we are going to be jumping into talking about light work and soul healing i'd love for us to just start with the super heavy but the really light to really set the stage so to speak so what is our soul <laughs> and, or our like inner source? Cause I think people listening, sometimes it's just like words people might not like understand really, like when you ha- use that vocabulary. So I'd love for you to just like, talk about that, like address that. And so people can go, how they connect in with it. What is our soul? <laughs> it's something to me, I feel it's something that we all are connected to at all times. But the question is, how or where are you of that connection? And a great way of remembering how we all, and to prove that we all were connected to that, go back to our childhood when we were able to just have fun, express ourselves, we're playing, very imaginative. We were connecting with everyone. We didn't have like a label or a preconceived perception of these people. 
And then since then, life happened. We got con conditioned to be a certain way, think a certain way. We had life experiences that may have caused some trauma to us. And we, or maybe we've been told at a young age, all right, to grow up, stop imagining it. And we started shutting that down, that connection that we had to just this bigger vastness than just like what's happening in here, in the space. It's cool because I like, just look at a kid when they're playing with a toy or playing whatever, they, they go outside, they can make like a magical adventure with a piece of stick. <laughs> and like you look at, oh, it's just a, to me. To me, you could be like, oh, it's just a stick. But like this kid, this is like a, a sorcerer stick or a magic wand or whatever it may be. And they're opening portals and all these different things out there. So that to me, that's that essence, soul connection, and it's something that I truly feel that we all are looking to reconnect to that and have that relationship again with it but we may be conditioned to feel that we need to grab things outside of us to experience that long-term. And with the external, it's temporary. But as a kid, we were just flowing in abundance with that connection because it's who we are. It's our natural. Yeah, I love that. Connecting to that inner child is so important. And we do lose that disconnection because we're flooded with the, the world. So to speak, you can do this or you can't do that, or given the specific road to travel on that might not be our choice. So yeah. How do we, Kai, I'd love you for you to comment first and then I'll, we can have some more feedback. Sure. Uh, I believe the soul is the expansive a part of who we truly are. It can serve as a navigational system to what it is that we truly desire. It can serve as a comfort in a really distraught and difficult time. I think that it is the source of everything that we ever need in any moment. Hmm. So true. So true. And so when we're in that space of needing that connection, how, how do we then connect in and tune in, tune in <laughs> to find this higher level of ourselves or aspect of ourselves? What's the connection in peace? I think that's the piece like that Del was talking about. We're all wanting to connect in, but how do we do it? <laughs> <laughs> It's like a, a toaster looking to find out how to connect to the electricity. <laughs> <laughs> how to find the piece of toast, the magic piece of toast. <laughs> right. uh, or the Pop-Tart, <laughs> depends who you are. <laughs> magical Pop-Tart. <laughs> As it's flowing through us, I really believe that it's what we are, as opposed to something that we need to seek out to connect to. Mm -hmm. And what's great is that if we don't remember that in the moment that we have amazing professionals like myself and Del who are here to remind you and to have a conversation to just bring you back into a space where you're like, oh yeah, <laughs> that is true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And are there specific <laughs> practices that um, can help with that? like a uh, meditation or affirmations, anything specific that you work with your, uh, your clients and helping to get into that tune in place. And besides that memory piece, which you mentioned, I think is very helpful. This is a cool thing. And I love this about helping people to connect in that space because we all have our own unique flavor to be able to do that and whatever practice it may be. And in my own journey, I felt like I needed to do it one certain way to actually get in that space. And even though it helped, I would think this is the only way. And what I realize now is that there's infinite spaces or infinite ways to connect with the infinite. So like for me in my sessions with people, it's like a tailored suit, depending on who I'm speaking with in the moment. It was funny, I was just having this conversation with Kai, and I was like, when I'm working with my clients, I'm working with them individually, differently, as opposed to I'm gonna, I got this set criteria for you, and I'm gonna use this for you and use this for you. What I'm doing is I step into the whatever the conversation is with the client with an open heart, open space with them. And usually what I'm seeing that starts to happen for people to access the peace is access more peace in their life is we have to bring awareness to what it is right now. What's going on with you right now in the current moment? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people are present, they come to me, okay, I'm dealing with this one thing, whatever the situation might be that they're experiencing in their life, but 
they know deep down inside of them that there's a different way to process this and they would like to process it in a different way and integrate calmness, peace, whatever it may be. So we bring forth an awareness to whatever's happening in a situation. I ask them some questions about it. Tell me more about it. How does this make you feel authentically? Have you ever had a space to process how you authentically feel? Because a lot of times what happens is this current trigger is reminding them of a moment that they had a previous experience. It might be a relationship. It might have been when they were a kid, upbringing with their parents. And they had this emotion that they never had an opportunity to process. So mm-hmm. it's like their inner child is like tugging at them. Like, hey, give me some attention right now. I just mm-hmm. want to be able to like be seen and be acknowledged and be heard. Something that we all would love to experience is to be acknowledged, be heard, be seen, not feel like we're going to be judged, not feel like we're going to be punished again if we express our truth. And it's very transformative because when they actually are doing that and they're able to actually process that, what happens is that person, whoever I'm working with, they actually get to be the parent, they get to be the lover, they get to be the friend, whatever they were expecting and hoping the other person was given to them, they actually have an opportunity in that moment to give it to themselves. And it's transformative. Mm-hmm. It's not a, like, wow, <laughs> that's what I've been searching for. I've been searching for me to give me that space just to process my things. And then next year, the resentment goes away, the bitterness towards the other person, because now they're able to see those experiences from the lens of somebody who is doing a process of healing, not from the lens of somebody who may have been stuck. So like a little kid looking at a situation and judging it from the perception of a kid, they're more an expansive, more awareness that they are now. They can look at those situations from a more expanded awareness. And it's so amazing what happens from there. And then, oh, there's that piece I've been looking for. <laughs> Totally. Yeah, it all seems to come back to when those memories that we create as a child, which is so important. It's interesting how we have the age from um, birth to four to five, right? Those are our prime memory creating or are creating us as humans, but then we don't have that many memories from that time period because they're just so we're living this whole different la la land, (laughs) as you mentioned with creating and manifesting and having all that abundance happen within us. And so it's interesting how we have the creation, but then we also have the memory, which is different, but then we can, we have that one traumatic maybe moment or something that creates like this lock, this particular piece of the puzzle that it's just like you were saying, unlock it or stuck, or how can we remember that piece to create, have that aha moment? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting too, because it's, it's like a little, I always use analogy. It's a little snowball of emotion in that moment that if you're able to process it fully in that moment, you can let it go. Mm -hmm. It's like a kid when they're a baby, when they have the temper tantrum, they're letting out and then it may take a couple of minutes, may take a couple hours, but then they're back fine, they're playing and they stuff. Mm-hmm. But like babies and even younger kids are so amazing at, in regards to processing the emotion they feel in the moment and mm-hmm. to let it go. But then we've been taught, okay, this thing happened. I, oh, I can't, can't feel this way. I got to suppress it. I got to hold this in. Mm-hmm. And we're living life with so much energy to pack all this stuff in. Why we also got to use our energy to navigate in life. And then life is going to present opportunities that are going to trigger that part of us. Being, oh, wait, I can't feel it. So then that's the thing, like I call the inner conflict that's going on when this moment is actually trying to help you to be able to release that in, to get back in this place of love and more awareness. And it's a process, it's, it's a, but it's a fun process. And right. It's something <laughs> I, I for me, and this is just, just my way of doing it, I truly feel like this is something that we should do in your own unique way. I'm not going to say this is my way. My way is the way, <laughs> but no, in your own way of be, bringing more awareness to yourself and loving yourself more and bringing that more peace. But also you're more than willing to like try other things as well. If you mm-hmm. want to hold that stuff, you can as well. <laughs> hmm hmm Yeah. And an interesting piece, I think too, talking about children coming up in the age that we are now is they have a lot of, it's been interesting to see the children in this kind of, because of the pandemic, it's like extreme bubble 
right? It's like they wrote it in this really interesting way. And I'm curious to see how that's going to shift. And they're going to, we're going to see the other side of that coin where they were very different environment of growing up with those two years. And it's, we're still in it. But what do you guys think? Do you think there's going to be a, I don't know, as a child being, it's a very different environment. Like everyone around you masks, not be able to see people's faces and ex- being able to express yourself and not being able to be in a community environment. And that's totally weird as a kid. It's different. It's yeah, different. Very different. <laughs> yeah. And uh, in my opinion, I think that it is the perfect formula for expanded self-awareness. Right. Totally. They're going to break out of that. That's what's, it's like so fascinating. I'm excited to see what's going to happen with this new generation. Cause they're going to be like fed up. <laughs> I think for one, <laughs> we're like, Nope, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. you, you see it too. It was, I saw a post online maybe on LinkedIn or something, but they were talking about, it was certain companies who were complaining about how the younger generation, they don't want to work the way, like how things worked before of like the hard work and rah, rah, bust your butt. And they actually want to have shorter hours, but to be able to produce, but also to have that balance of work-life balance. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it's like a shift in regards to how they interact with that, but also you hear it as well. They say like a lot of millennials and young kids are leaving religion and they're going into spirituality and new age. So there's a, you could tell these kids are like, all right, we got to do something new here because this old (laughs) stuff right now with this collective consciousness going on, it's not working for us. Right. (laughs) Not working, not working. Yeah. And I think as light workers, if we're talking about speed, as we become more enlightened and developed on the planet, like I can work way faster when I'm in the zone. As in someone like, how did you get all that done? I was like, I don't know. (laughs) And that could be part of that new generation that's coming up and they're just like on it at a different level. And there's, I can do that way faster. So I can have more time to go out to hang with my friends or just be myself, be in the garden, whatever whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, like with this new way, like you said, the high speed and you can see the internet as well, how fast the internet mm-hmm. is going sick. back in the nineties of the 56 K modem. <laughs> 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 Old school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Things are shifting. Things are getting faster. We have a computer at our hands now and <laughs> way different than that Nokia that we had with the snake and stuff. So <laughs> there's so much upgrading that's happening mm-hmm. collectively, but then there's people who won't, are sticking to the old paradigm because the old paradigm, oh, this is this worked back in my day. This <laughs> And I, I stopped myself with my son. I'm, when I say back, my daughter, <laughs> now I'm saying the thing that my parents were saying to me, but there's right. like a new way of doing things and it's more effortless. Mm, exactly. There's moments of putting effort in, like you say, your zone. When I get into my zone, I get so much done. There's moments of that, but there's also, there's moments of not having to put effort in, just be, mm-hmm. but then the inspired actions and things like that. So this is new wave and these young people, they're like, <laughs> they're here. They're the, the pioneers for bringing this in because right. they're like this side, they're on the side of this effortless thing. And then um, for us, the people who, the kids who grew up in the internet age before the internet, we're like the balance of both because mm-hmm. we experience both sides of things. What I, I'm like, I'm more of an effortless person. So <laughs> I love not, having to put more effort than I need to do and feel inspired. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Work less, have more fun, less effort. Totally. So when we're in this place of spiritual consciousness and we're working on uplifting our soul, our being connecting to that inner source, how does that then rip? What's the ripple effect around us in our uh, collective consciousness, as you called it before, how does that ripple effect work? (laughs) Should I ripple? (laughs) I believe that there is a there's definitely a wave of new thinking but when you have one early adopter it's oh yeah that's wonderful that you have this new idea about a new paradigm that can come about but when people start to experience 
how they are with that early adopter. And they're like, how are you getting things done so fast? How are you able to, you know, perceive the world in the way that you do? It becomes infectious. It becomes also easily accessible to anyone who would like to adopt the new paradigm. Mm -hmm. So it's by that one person simply being daring enough to dream and imagine like Del was talking about before that all it has to do is just spark a little bit of curiosity in another. Mm -hmm. It will spread itself. It, there's no effort that's needed to be put <laughs> into the, the widespread embracing of something that is essentially for the greater good. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah. I love that we're this whole theme of like effortlessness <laughs> because I think it's so true. And, and Del was saying earlier, the old thought process is work harder to, to make, to get there, to get it done. And, and the spiritual consciousness to uplift it is it's to happen, just happen when you're in your zone. It's just everything like flows together, right? Like niches, 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 like you're just <laughs> all flows together. There's not, the work isn't there. And I think that's a, the shift that you're talking about too. So we can be in the zone. We can be in that collective consciousness when we're in the place of connecting. <laughs> <laughs> you have architects and you have the builders mm -hmm. and those are not the same job. Mm -hmm. I believe that through the mechanical effort that the earlier generations have put in, that they have literally built the machines that the architects are now envisioning. And they're just realizing that it came from previous generations. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. The groundwork it was laid. Exactly. Yeah. And we have to be in the space where the shifts to happen. <laughs> they can't just happen if we don't have that groundwork. <laughs> Otherwise people would just, I don't know, float off into the moon, <laughs> which would be okay. <laughs> we do have to have some groundwork. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so I um, another piece I wanted to talk to you both about is, is up-leveling like DNA and the body, because I think that's, of course, <laughs> that's what I love to talk about, but I think that's a really important piece for people to, um, just to, for us to open the conversation, are there methods to activate the DNA more quickly? How do we do it? How does, is it connected to our soul? Is it, is, what's the genetic blueprint? How is that DNA coming through? I have like that, a bazillion questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is my favorite subject, by the way. <laughs> like, for me, I'm sitting here curious because I'm like, I never really talked about like the DNA, but I am so willing to like learn about this. That's what I'm like, oh, I'm sitting here. <laughs> and you may not have been talking about it, but you've been doing it. Exactly. And, uh, <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> I like to call this, this phase of experimentation for myself, because I love experimenting with all of the different ways that we can be, especially with our body. Mm -hmm. I call this embodying the mission. Mm. And we know how powerful thought forms are. We know that thought forms uh, once repeated many times simply become our belief system. Right. And then that belief system very much affects our physiology from a standpoint on epigenetics, from a standpoint of quantum physics and quantum biology and quantum healing, there is so much that we can do with the tool and the vessel that we've been given while we're here. So the experimentation that I've been doing has been with food, especially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I say food, but I don't just mean nutrition. What it is that I consume. Mm -hmm. That could be media, that could be my own thoughts, that could be the podcast that I listen to, <laughs> that can literally be the, also the things that I buy have an effect on my physiology. Mm -hmm. uh, I've gone from the, the ascetism of wanting to find out what it's like to uh, be on a, a juice diet, a liquid diet for 21 days. And having done that, there's so much afforded to me in terms of reprogramming my, my neurology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is something that we can actually consciously do. And the, there was an underlying, there was an underlying theme between that experiment in uh, juicing 
which meant that I gave my digestive system the opportunity to take a break <laughs> and right. to focus its energy on other things. You, it's in, it is incredible the amount of energy that we simply spend on chewing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does take, it's one of our biggest muscles, the masticator. Yeah, so it does take a lot of energy and people don't use it. They just swallow it, swallow their food. They, I think it's in, what is it? The uh, macrobiotic diet, they say they choose to 54 or it's 52 or 54 times with each bite, which who does that? Nobody does that. Because you like one no. bite, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that leaves the rest of the digestive system to do the work. Right. It slows <laughs> it all down. <laughs> exactly. So when you start to affect your system in that way, for instance, having just liquids, imagine how quickly everything else digests in your reality as well. Mm -hmm. uh, like the new thoughts or the new beings or the new ways that you want to manifest yourself in this reality all of them metabolize a lot faster. So now I said, all right, that's great. We did an, an amazing experiment with that. And that is one way to get to that space. Mm -hmm. So I said, we can do this in infinite ways. So now what I'm doing is I've just re-entered a space that is very familiar to me from 10 years ago, where I was a competitive bodybuilder mm -hmm. and I decided, hey, let's do it again. And I had a conversation with a holistic practitioner friend of mine, a, a very amazing influencer. And I said, why does this space feel so familiar? Bodybuilding and doing something like fasting or juicing. And together we had a conversation and we said, oh, that's what it is. It's devotion. Mm hmm so having being single minded and that's one of the one of the paths of the eightfolded path of yoga mm -hmm. uh, being single minded about what it is that your intention is with your body gives you that laser focus give you that gives you that less amount of entropy in mm -hmm. the system mind body and spirit and literally anything becomes possible Totally. <laughs> yes. I love that. Yes. Anything is possible when we give our body the space. <laughs> yeah. That's I've been right. doing a detox for two weeks, I think now something like that. And then I'm doing, uh, I'll be finishing this week. And then one more week, I'm going to Costa Rica for a week for a retreat. And so I'm going to be continuing there as well. So yeah, the, I, I know exactly the feeling that you're talking about. You feel lighter you have, and I gave up caffeine, <laughs> which I was like, wow. okay, I'm going to give up coffee. I was like, I set myself up for it. Okay. I can do this. I can do this. And I was fine. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I like set myself up. I was going to be a really hard time with it, but I was totally fine with it. But the and I have the same amount or actually more energy than I usually do because I'm having less amount of things going in and I'm drinking lots of chlorophyll and spirulina and turmeric, all the herbs that are really energizing my DNA and helping my pineal gland to activate. And I think when we're doing all those things together, our body has the space like, woohoo, thank you for giving me the space to function. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the clarity also mm -hmm. is quite profound and the clarity of intention simply becomes a clarity and its manifestation. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. And I think that's really a huge piece for people when it comes to health is having the, and, and they're also their soul having the clarity for that connection and they're one being, <laughs> they're not separate. <laughs> Yeah. So what does the concept of soul healing mean exactly? If we're talking about, we talked about the soul, what this soul is like connecting to our inner or that inner place within us and around us who we are. So how do we, what's like soul healing? How do we heal our soul? What does that look like? Is it like, have, <laughs> it's like a piece of Swiss cheese. That's what I get in my mind. Like this piece <laughs> of Swiss cheese with all these holes in it. We got to <laughs> fix the holes. What does it mean exactly? <laughs> Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, in regards to soul healing, is and this is just my perspective, it's not about healing the soul, because on the soul level, you're complete. On the soul level, you are source. It's more so about healing that 
roadblock, the mm. road, the road of that connection with where you are now in this human body suit and connect into your soul. So all those little detours that you picked up in your life journey, being able to start to let go of those journey or let go of those roadblocks and integrate a new path, a new paveway. But the more doing that, the deeper you actually connect to what's already there. Mm-hmm, totally. And I believe that our soul, us, before we got here, we agreed upon whatever our life experiences are in this journey up to this point. I remember on YouTube, I actually watched a video about a person who had a near-death experience and, and she had near-death experience because she had she got in a pretty bad accident and she had it. And she had a conversation with God directly, source or high power understanding, and was like, why did this happen to me? Mm. And then God said, because you want because you agreed to this for this to happen to you. And that accident that she had was actually like her emergency stoplight. If I don't awaken by this time, I need this to happen so that way I can awaken. So it was like the the plan one, I guess the what's the thing called contingency, contingency. plan. There we <laughs> yeah. go. But break glass if, <laughs> right. break this glass in emergency and my soul, soul inside. Resonate. Yeah. <laughs> I still resonate with that and it's so freeing if you can get to that point of okay I chose this experience that I experienced in my lifetime like all the stuff I that happened in this, this is a co-creation at play not even just for myself but maybe the other people I'm involved with it's like for both our souls evolution and how they say that life is a school for all of us to evolve mm-hmm. and we are going to get there and having these experiences are actually helping to teach us to re-remember what we remember before we got here. <laughs> exactly. Yes, I totally agree with that. And I do think that we've chosen to come here for a reason and a purpose. So how do we rediscover what that purpose is? Now, like we have the connection. I think that's what, how do we do that? How would we, do we dive into discovering that true purpose, which it lights our soul up with that connection of why we came here? Yeah. By, by taking action, Mm. by being out in the world, even if I articulate it from a scientific point of view, I could say that it's like our existence is programmed for a state of equilibrium. Mm -hmm. And with each action and each choice that we make, we are either going to experience the universal autocorrect (laughs) to to bring us back to that point of equilibrium or we're going to continue on that vector that strays a little further away from from the origin so to speak Mm -hmm. and that's absolutely okay that's absolutely okay it's we don't go we don't not go on vacation because we're like oh I'm leaving from home I'm just going to end up back home at the end anyway so I'm not going to go on that vacation just to stay here at this beginning point no Mm -hmm. we go on an adventure and then we eventually return back to that knowingness that remembrance that we all have and that we all are yeah the coming home piece remembering yeah (laughs) totally yeah to coming home and remembering that piece of purpose and when we're in that like soul healing stage. And I think we, we set the stage for, we're not really healing our soul. We're just igniting it, so to speak, but like remembering who that are, that is, <laughs> do you both believe, or that, I think there's some train of thought or some people that believe that there's a piece of trauma that always has to be released in order for us to have that purpose or that like acknowledgement of truth to come forward. And I would just love your like thoughts about that. Like I used to think that (laughs) my own thought, like, oh yeah, everybody's got to have this piece of trauma that they release. I'm like, maybe not. Like, I'm like, no, I don't think so. I I think that is really old school that somebody ingrained in my brain. And I'm like, nah, I don't think I believe that anymore. (laughs) Okay. Let's take this. Let's take it here. (laughs) (laughs) Because yeah, it's like that notion, especially like in the spiritual community of shadow work. You gotta right. you gotta keep doing this shadow work. You gotta keep looking at this negative stuff and you gotta make peace with it. And it's like a an objective or a task. My task is I'm gonna look at all my shadows first 
<laughs> before I could be able to be connected in, in this space. And for me, because I grew up in a religious background before I made more of a spiritual one, it reminded me of you're a sinner, you're wretched, you're not worthy of God's grace. The only reason why you're worthy of to actually be there with God is because you got to be connected to this middle man, Jesus, to mm. be able to connect. Without that, you're nothing. <laughs> wow. You're born here, but this like shame, 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 right. shame. Mm -hmm. And in the, the shadow work thing, like, I'm not going to knock it. It's great. It's a great tool to do it, but you don't need to like feel like I got to go here into my trauma. I go through all this Rolodex and stuff like that. I believe with life is nature and nature unfolds in a way that nature's going to unfold. And in my journey, I was on that side of feeling I had to do all this stuff. But what I realize now is when you're present in a moment, life presents you with what it needs to present you with in the mm -hmm. moment. And the more you surrender, the more you actually are being with that nature and flowing with the nature, the less of those things that you have to really deal with. But also, like for me, I spend time just connecting with this divine source every day with meditation in the morning and being with myself, loving myself. And it's like just shedding light. And then sometimes things come up. But when it, it comes up and I'm in this place of love already and I just love it, and mm -hmm. then, whoop, that's it. <laughs> it's not like this rigorous process that maybe in like also because I had therapy before and which I'm talking about a trauma and I'm talking about the same trauma for a Yeah, it's like you're reliving it over and over again. That doesn't yeah. seem like spiritually healthy. I think like the acknowledgement piece I think is really important because then you can process it like, okay, great. I acknowledge that. Maybe I had a, a true trauma, blah, blah, blah. Not that I'm yeah. discounting any trauma out there, but yeah. <laughs> at the same time, I think if, if we, it becomes every, it's just like an, a disease. It comes every cell of our being. Like I deal with this trauma. It's affecting every yeah. aspect of my life. That just doesn't seem to compute. <laughs> I don't compute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And obviously some, like you said, some traumas, they are traumas, right? But a lot of times when you just observe it and bring awareness to these things that are considered trauma in our life, it's an illusion. And <laughs> the reason I say it's an illusion is you're looking at it from one perspective and not from the universal truth of that moment for what it really is. And a great example of this for me was I had resentment energy towards my parents. I didn't know why I had resentment towards them. I sat with that part. And come to find out, I had this part of me having resentment because I didn't get a toy. That's a pretty common one, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, or, or even another great example is I had abandonment issues that showed my relationship. And when I sat with that, it brought me to a point when I was a kid in which my mom, because I was so clingy to my mom at all times, she told me that she was going to the store. I was at my grandma's in Alabama. She went, to, she said, I'm going to the store with um, my dad at that time and I'll be right back. And she never came back. Oh, and no. I was waiting for her at the door. I was waiting for her and I was like, my mom's going to be here. My mom's going to come here. And then my grandma said to me, mom, your mom's not coming here. And it devastated me in that moment. And I never processed that in that one moment. But since then, I took on this belief that I got abandoned and I got to do everything possible so people don't abandon me. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But taking a look at it from this awareness i'm like oh it's not that big of a deal but obviously my the kid part of me at that time thought it was a big deal so mm -hmm. i had a conversation this is the reason why she did it like having those conversations with those parts of me and it held it but mostly that's what i was thinking that a lot of the traumas is just an illusion right yeah that we create we create our own illusion i think there was i don't remember exactly what it is there's some study that was done and how many i think it was done around 9 11 and there was a, it was about the same exact moment in time. And all the people that they asked had a different perception of that same exact moment. And I think about that when I'm, I'm thinking about something that's affecting me, I'm like, that person right next to me sees it in a whole different way than I do. And I think that's so key about what you're saying too, is yeah, we, as kids, we have this perception of, oh yeah, mom didn't abandon me, never came back. But then she was just probably trying to teach you a lesson. Like maybe she yeah. needs some space or something. <laughs> yeah. It's knowing that, okay, she knew that. Why don't you want me to spend some time with my grandma? 
And she knew that, okay, he's not going to let go of me because he's so clingy to me and so attached to me. So I had to do something in a way so that way he can actually spend time with his grandma, but also I can step out to be able to go back home. And obviously at that time, judge, jury, executioner from a kid's perspective, that's what I took on from that. Mm -hmm. And you're like you were just saying, so many different perceptions, perspectives about one moment. And the thing that could fall into illusion is feeling or believing that everyone needs to have the perception like me. This is what it is because this is the mm -hmm. way I see it. It's the only way that is true. Mm -hmm. And which every single thing has infinite perspectives based upon our own beliefs and conditioning about life up to that moment. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah. And especially from that health perspective, Kai, I was wondering you were like, when we're in that place of disease or we're not feeling that great, it's like, we have this whole illusion around us of everyone sees me as that disease, identifies me as that disease when it's actually just you're the one. <laughs> Sometimes we do get labeled. What do you think about that? How do we then shift that perspective around health, particularly when we are in this space of it's like every word becomes that, I don't know, maybe what would be, I don't want to say anything particularly, but <laughs> if you're, you're stuck in this disease state and then you're, you become, it's like, it becomes your amoeba or whatever. You're like you're this alien being. You become this new person, which isn't really you. We're talking here about soul healing and really connecting with the source, but you become another reality of you. <laughs> wow. Yeah, absolutely. That's how they say that the diagnosis affects people more so than the actual disease itself. Yeah. So developing a, a belief system that is analogous to who the person actually wants to be. A lot of times uh, when we think of having things go on in a, a personality like codependence, or people are calling narcissism a disease these days. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's hashtag narcissism. And if we take an objective perspective, it our body is electric circuitry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If we receive all of these impulses known as a stimuli from our external environment and they overload our system, causing frayed wires, causing a, a whole lot of different orientations that are not necessarily for the highest good of our biology, and then they manifest as something that the DSM-5 will classify or that a doctor will diagnose. But all that is really necessary is a resolution of the system. Mm -hmm. How do we actually clear the circuitry? How do we uh, remedy the frayed wires and the additional entropy that has been introduced into the, the circuitry? Each item, each stimulus that we receive is literally a sensation if we mm -hmm. now bring it into the body. The interpretation of that sensation is attributed to the story that we give it. It's neither a negative or positive charge to it until we actually associate that meaning. Mm -hmm. So we can very well handle our biology and manage our symptoms, manage our biology at the deepest root of where it is occurring from through literally dealing it with it at the energetic level. It does not have to go into the story. However, some people do find that helpful, which is <laughs> right. why we have a cognitive behavior therapy and talk therapy and all of the shadow work and all right. of these things. <laughs> we just have, now we've been afforded an infinite number of ways to, uh, to work with these things. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause everyone has a different um, way that they need the healing or not need it, but accept it, receive the healing in, or, and multiple, like for me, I, I like multiple things. I'm just not just usually just not one thing. I'm like, gotta have some acupuncture. I gotta have some, some massage. I need to have like, I need to do some sauna, like all the things together. Like for me help if I'm in a stuck, stuck energetic place, that's usually what kind of like really activates my body and it enables me to move to the next level. Or I'll do, you know, other things like sound healing. Like there's so many different things out there. Yeah. Explore everybody, get out there. <laughs> find some yeah. new stuff. Everybody's doing really cool stuff out there. <laughs> yeah. And the remedy could be as easy as go for a swim, take a nap, right. have yeah. some fun. Get you some don't sun. have to talk about <laughs> the positive ions and the, you know, da, 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 da. 
it can be that simple as well. Or you can get geeky. It's up to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No <laughs> right. No pressure. <laughs> And you discover your preference by trying things to see what works for you, mm -hmm. what doesn't work for you. And even when you're trying something that's working for you, if you get to a point where it's no longer resonating with you, there's an abundance of stuff and you don't have to feel guilty. Okay, this doesn't work for me no more. Mm -hmm. I can go to something else as opposed to this isn't working for me anymore, but I'm going to keep doing this because of the <laughs> fact that I feel like it's the right thing for me to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what I tell my patients when it comes to supplements all the time, but they'll come and see me and they'll have a list 40 supplements. <laughs> I've seen people with this many. And I'm like, okay, so you're really taking all these things all the time. I mean, that seems exhausting one, but really does your body need it? Like every day, every moment, like check in, tune in and say, what do I need today? What do I need in this moment? Maybe you just need one. Maybe you need 12. I don't know. There seems like there's a the disconnect like the spiritual disconnect, the emotional disconnect, the physical, the mental, like it's all like people are all over the board, <laughs> like tune into your body, be one, make the decisions <laughs> together <laughs> as a cohesive unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's uh, shift over and talk about conscious relationships. Cause I think this will be a fun way for us to end our conversation today. So we're in this place of, let's say you're, maybe you're looking for, let's talk about first, so what is a conscious relationship, what we're even talking about, let's set the groundwork for that. And then let's talk about some other pieces. What do you need to, if you're looking for a partner, how do you know that someone's on the same spiritual level as you do you need to be? What is that connection? What about a soulmate? What's a twin flame? There's so many fun ways to go on this. <laughs> No, you tell the story really well, <laughs> how we met. Oh, this is going to help a lot of people, especially in regards to if you're looking for a relationship or maybe you're in a relationship right now and you would like the relationship to grow. Before I met Kai, I was just single at that time. I wasn't really looking for a relationship. Just got out of a relationship about a couple months before then. And I was really just focused on me, focused on my work going to the gym, not really focused on a relationship. Did a couple of casual dating and stuff like that, but nothing too serious. But I got this interesting call to go on Tinder. I get, you could call it intuitive guidance. So, <laughs> Tinder's intuitive guidance. <laughs> yeah. I went on Tinder, did, did what I was, I did before on, on Tinder, swipe left, swipe white, or swipe up. I don't know what swipes it is now. It's probably make the universe sign. The infinity <laughs> sign of yeah. unlimited dates. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but they had one option at that time and it was called super. So if you really like somebody, you send them a super like, like oh, you really like you. So I'm going through this. And then next I see this beautiful woman in her bodybuilding photo. I'm like, whoa. And I'm like, uh, is this real? Because like sometimes it's a thing called catfish in which people put a photo up, but it's not really them. Right. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to super swipe this person and see what happens. And then synchronistically we match. And then for her, she was living in Delaware at that time, but she was traveling from Delaware to New York. And somehow with her traveling up to New York, her and I were in the radius to be able to see each other at that time. <laughs> synchronicity <laughs> yeah so when we got to, we matched we talked we got together we started dating at that time casually but the thing about it that was happening at that time too was the fact like we brought in all of our stuff <laughs> from previous experiences from the previous relationship not really doing the healing work at that time but we really brought we brought ourselves we were meant mm -hmm. to bring ourselves in that moment and yeah, we had our ups and downs, fun times, not so fun times, healing moments, expansive moments like that. But what happened in both of our stuff is we both awakened in the relationship. She was, I would say that you were already awakened. You're doing Buddhist practices and things like that. Me, I was still on a religious side. The funny thing was one time she had a crystal, a skull crystal um, at the time of us living together. And my son went to the crystal. Oh, what's this? And I got so triggered from the religious stuff. Like, Jaden, don't try to say, no, 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 no. <laughs> and <laughs> I, 
I, I was so against that. But then what happened was we broke up. Uh, we broke up. And this is like my pattern that I do with breakups at the times. I would try to make things, try to make it work and stuff like that for the fear, that abandonment thing that I was having. But right. this is how the this is how the universe got me because the universe always finds a way. That's how I that's how I feel. And in that, with me being open to trying to win her back and try to get back in a relationship. I actually partake in, in a psychedelic journey, plant medicine for the very first time. Mm. That opened my awareness. But even with the open awareness for that, it was bringing up all of our stuff, but we still had a lot of things that we were very codependent to each other, mm-hmm. very needing each other to be there, be a certain way other than who we were authentically and not really accepting the other for who they are in the moment. And more importantly, we're accepting ourselves for who we were in the moment. So we got more conscious with relationship. And the reason why we actually started to become more conscious with it was we made the intention of doing our inner work. Mm, right. <laughs> me, that is like one of the most pivotal things in a conscious relationship in which there's two people who are doing their healing work. Make, putting forth that effort for doing that work, putting forth the effort of the self-care, the self-love, mm-hmm. putting that first, like a relationship in which you get to put yourself first and not feel guilty for it because the other person feels, I need you to be here for me all the time and all this other stuff. <laughs> and at least a resentment on both sides. Yeah, you didn't show up today. You didn't support me. You didn't, you didn't say what you're going to do. <laughs> all of those things, yes. <laughs> yeah. The shoulda, coulda, so woulda. What I, so what I realized is the more we brought our own awareness with ourselves and doing our own inner work, the more awareness that got brought into the relationship in which we're doing the stuff for ourselves. So instead of coming into the relationship, hey, I need you to do this. Hey, I need this. It is so free, more freedom into it mm-hmm. in which we get to be ourselves in the moment. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to say we don't have our little scuffles that we have moment to moment, but we actually have a space that's different than the way we handled it years ago. And which if there's a potential conflict arising, we handle it in the moment and we shift and we don't wait for it. We don't hold grudges and things like that. We actually, this is a healing moment for both of us to expand mm-hmm. and we have a conversation about it. And it's very transformative because I'm accepting me for who I am. I'm loving me for who I am. And the, I'm doing this more, I'm cultivating and I'm able to accept and love her for who she is as well. But it's like a light radiating the light to the other person and both lights are just shining and Mm. expanding and Mm. willing to do the work. But the most important thing that we both agree upon is our soul's evolution is the most important thing. And that's the reason why we're here to Mm. evolve. That's right. Exactly. I love that. What a great story. Thank you for sharing. I love the, the reconnection piece, which I think, it, you know, it's good for then you really know, right? You're like, is this person really who I want to be with? Universe, show yeah. me the sign, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so it true. A, yeah. Somebody asked me about that too recently. Oh, our cousin Gabby. Mm-hmm. She asked me, she was like, when did you know that Caillou was the one? I was like, oh, I knew years ago, but it wasn't something that I wasn't, I, I didn't fully know, but it was an intuitive like tug. Okay, there's mm-hmm. something, I feel something here. And <laughs> I just, that's what kept me going. Kept me, I'm like, I feel something, but now I knew, okay, this person is meant to help you evolve and vice versa. You agreed upon this journey together mm-hmm. before you reincarnated here went through what we went through and the crazy thing about it was we actually crossed paths in high school and never talked to each other (laughs) I played football for a school that played against her school she was in a band so we were in the same vicinity together and never crossed paths until (laughs) when we did that's awesome that's so funny yeah my husband and I we were set up on a a blind date and we later found out that the person set up us up 
went to the, she went to high school with my dad, like, and she was living in California. And so, but they didn't know each other. Like one was a sophomore and one was a senior. You can't mix <laughs> with those upperclassmen type of a thing, but they didn't know each other, but we opened up my dad's yearbook. And we're like, oh my gosh, there she is. She's the one that introduced us. So it was really funny. You never know how you're going to be connected. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So true. So if people are out there listening and looking to find their soulmate, what are some tips that you can give them to really connect into that really true, like conscious relationship when they're looking, is it more of a, an outward piece or an inward piece? Of course, both. (laughs) I feel for me, I feel it's an inward thing as well, because the most important soulmate for you to connect with is yourself. Mm, Right. Building that love and relationship with yourself it makes it much, much easier to find a soulmate out there because then you don't have potential ego, egoic, egoic list of I need this person to be this with this. <laughs> it becomes very simplified because you're giving yourself those things. So then there's obviously some essence stuff that you like to, to be with that partner. Like, okay, maybe for like on the spiritual stuff, a partner that's doing the inner work, they're doing their healing work mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. A partner that is loving themselves a partner that is expanding and willing to expand as well. And a partner who can offer support, but doesn't need to offer support for me at all times. It's mm-hmm. like for us with the support, if we need support, we check in with the other person to see how they are. As right. Opposed to like, I know you're upset right now, but I need, I need you to be here with me. And <laughs> as opposed to, Hey, like, how are you doing? How are you doing? Are you able to offer some time for me? And mm-hmm. if she says, no, I'm okay with that. And then vice versa, but we'll set some time because maybe I'm going through something. Maybe I'm, I'm busy with this thing, but there's no bitterness and stuff like that. But the more inner healing work you do, the more easier it becomes to find a soulmate. And you never know. A soulmate could be right in front of you, but you're looking <laughs> at it from an egoic lens instead of a soul lens. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah asking some different questions that you may not normally ask yourself, like, instead of what am I looking for in my partner, which is a great question, you know, to ask as a first go around, and then ask yourself, how is it that you would like to feel? Mm -hmm. Who are you willing to become? Or who would you like to evolve into during the relationship? Mm -hmm. There's not once you meet, that's not over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's yeah. still the whole journey to go <laughs> right. yes after yes right yeah li- the life journey yes <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's something too that um i hear that a lot of people who are single they say like i need to heal myself before i get into a relationship and i'm like listen like this journey is long lasting <laughs> and you're, you'll feel like you're healed and you'll get in a relationship and there will be a trigger that will pop up so why not do the work that you're doing, have that support for you as you're going through the process, mm-hmm. but then also be upfront with the other person and let them know where you're at, what you're doing and take it or leave it. And it's, it's funny because I spoke to somebody, this is a couple of months ago, but the person said they're on a spiritual journey. They, they said to a person that they were dating, cause they was actually doing a process of healing. They're, they're overcoming some things on the very first date. This person let it all out. Clean slate. This is what I'm dealing with. <laughs> or dirty this is slate. What I'm dealing with right now. <laughs> I'm getting support with this. I'm getting support with this. I'm heal- I'm in my healing journey. I'm dealing with these traumas right now that I experienced. And I'm doing the work to be able to not allow these things to affect my relationship. Mm. You can take this or leave it. Yeah. And you know what happened with that? Three months later, they got engaged. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's good to be raw, to be easy, yeah. to be your true self and be raw and say what you want from the relationship. I think that's really key. And my husband and I did that when we first met. And what do you really want? Because if you don't set that, those like your expectations, so to speak, I, yeah. I, that's a strange word, but manifestations for what you both want and you're not jiving on the same plate, so to speak, you're going to end up on different sides of the, the course and you're going to be trying to communicate yeah. over like a stadium of 
people. And so it's not going to be that fun for either person involved. I, 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 yeah, that's really true. Kai and Dell, we could talk for an eternity. I think all kinds of yeah. wonderful subjects, but I know we have to wrap up things today. So let's make sure we do a couple of things. I want you to talk about your amazing podcast and your freebie, the, uh, the soul chat. So talk about those things. And then I'm going to have one last fun question as we wrap up today and, oh, and where people can find you and, um, follow you too. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> we are branded together and separately. So you can find us in our individual disciplines and passions as well. Uh, but together we are our daily magic. That's O-U-R-D-A-I-L-Y-M-A-G-I-C.com. And uh, you can connect with us there. That's also everywhere else. <laughs> Instagram, <laughs> website. Right. Everywhere. <laughs> right. Everywhere. Uh, which is also the name of our podcast, which is also everywhere. <laughs> and uh, we were so fortunate to have Dr. Lulu as an amazing guest. And you can find that episode oh, yeah. and our magical conversation. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> And if you'd like to connect with us uh, two on one or two on two, uh, <laughs> then you can find a link to do so at ourdailymagic.as.me slash soul chat. So that's ourdailymagic.as.me slash soul chat. I like that. Ask me. Yeah. Ask me. <laughs> as me. Yes. Ask me. And what, are, and you also have a, a freebie, your free soul chat. Is that the free? No, there's a different one. Oh, no, that's it. That's the free soul chat. <laughs> yes. That's it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> awesome. Great. And so people can, we'll put all of that in the show notes. So people will be really easy to find you and connect and learn more about the amazing things that you're doing on the planet and the world <laughs> growing everyone's daily magic or magic daily. One last fun questions for wrapping up. If you both, you can answer it together or individually, either one. If you had an unlimited budget right now, what would you do to make the biggest impact on the planet? Wow. That's a pretty cool question. Mm. <laughs> it was unlimited budget. Unlimited. You, there's no limit. Well, my first, the first thing you know, I was thinking about this is to give everyone enough abundance to realize that they don't have to sacrifice the connection to themselves mm. for the sake of money. Mm -hmm. And actually you have an opportunity to do what makes you happy. Every single person here, I have a limited budget. You can now do whatever makes you happy. Now you don't have to wait until you have to retire the 401k that stuff you get to have fun right now i love that ding that's a great one that's a super great one yes unlimited budget for every or unlimited abundance for everyone to realize their dream and live it right yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i and if you if this was existing in the same universe oh, yeah. then uh, <laughs> I would, I would bestow upon everyone an opportunity to rest. Yes. Rest is great. People need it so much. Yes. Yeah. We have a hard time just resting, just doing nothing. <laughs> a day of doing nothing can be the biggest restoration your body could ever ask for. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Great. I love both of those answers. That's so in line with our conversation today. And Thanks again, both of you for joining. And I can't wait to share it with the world. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.